Oracle added Ash into their uh, database engine. So it's really, really crucial and important. I have actually prepared a separate slide uh, where I'll explain you how to troubleshoot using both AWR and, and Ash reports and why Ash is, is more beneficial and has more advantage and benefits on the top of, of AWR reports. So we'll cover that later on, maybe maybe after second half of this session. So talking about the Ash use, basically what happens is like um, every second Oracle database, especially this process called as Mmon Lite, if I'm not wrong, Mmon MMNL or Mmon Lite process is responsible to snap, you know, every second information from the database, right? So it's collect information from all of the average, uh, I mean, all of the active sessions that executes on the, the or that that actually present on the database and what exactly they are doing. So there's those statistics are captured by that background process, right? And will uh, the it actually flushes flushes that information into the uh, the uh, cache version of uh, active session history called as v dollar active underscore session underscore history. But I guess after 60 minutes or exactly after one hour, it started moving it into the historical version of it, which is called as db underscore hist underscore active underscore session underscore history, active session history. So. Uh, there is this live or cache version of it called as V dollar active session history, and there is a historical version called a DB underscore history underscore active session history, right? So uh, every second, basically, it samples the information of all of the active sessions on the database and why on what they are waiting on, the SQL ID, the uh, the session specific information. So it keeps on populating the V dollar active session history. But whenever this this circular buffer reaches a 60 minute of period automatic that starts flushing that information to the uh, historical version of uh, that dynamic view, which is called as DBA active session history. OK, <clears throat> now for example, if someone asks you like uh, we actually had faced this problem two days back where uh, you know a lot of a um, uh, lot of slowness was observed because this thing is not at present. So this actually had happened 48 hours ago. In your system, so how you can get that information from the database? So Ash is the answer. So what you can do, you can go query the Ash specific dynamic views or historical views to get that information. Okay. So like for in, like in this example, if you see, I've this is a snap of uh, uh, a text based AWR report which says event DB file scattered read and. Uh, this DB file scattered read in short during that particular period, which happened some 48 hours, uh, hours ago, some two days back, uh, the system observed 10,282 weights on this DB file scattered read. Any idea like what exactly is the DB file scattered read? This is this is an event basically, so a database weight event interface. What is a DB file scattered read? Anyone would like to answer? Uh, the blocks are uh, reading means mostly when full table scan is going on, we see the DB file is scattered and it read uh, uh, the block title from the disk, not from the buffer. That's correct. I mean, whenever you know multiple blocks uh, has been read from the disk and you know issued multiple I/O requests and then place those those particular blocks into the memory, that entire period session has to wait on this event called as db file scattered read. So that usually happens in the case when you're doing a full table scan on a very big table, right? So that has happened. So just in, just assume a hypothetical situation when your customer says some two days back, right? Uh, uh, we observed some slowness and why it was there uh, and why it's it, it was there because the database experienced a lot of db file scattered read wait events. So in short, 10,282 events and with total wait time in second was 82.8 .8, and average wait was for each of those sessions were 41.50 ms i mean like for example this 10282 uh, times session were waited on this db file scattered read and every time on an average they spend around 41.50 ms or milliseconds uh, on this particular wait right and that actually contributed almost 44% of the total db time Right, and this is basically part of the user IO, uh, a kind of a weight class. So how you can get that information, right? So, uh, just a second. This is the query or the statement that is embedded in this PPT. So uh, you can always go and uh, 
query or db underscore hist underscore SQL text to get SQL specific information, right? And do a join between db underscore hist active session history and db underscore hist underscore snapshot. So what will uh, so this dba hist active session history will provide historical information which is now present in your in your ash pools, right? And db underscore hist underscore snapshot will help you to pass this begin and the snap ID, right? Because this 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 view has actually got snap specific information, right? So if you go and query it. This is what you got in db underscore hist underscore snapshot snap ID db ID and uh, begin interval time and end interval time. So I basically used begin interval time and end interval time in order to get the information or details about like what exactly has happened into the system for that particular weight event. So what I did, I actually this this query will ask you for multiple inputs like the very first input it asks you what is the event class, right? And as per the AWR report, it says user IO, right? So we have to pass user IO and what is the event name which you want to check in the database for that particular period of time? So it was DB file scattered read again. We have we've got that information from the AWR report, right? DB file scattered read and then what was uh, the begin snap and the end snap this represents the time period the fraction of time when you want to check the database right and then you have to pass the db id so the moment you you execute this query this will what you'll get this is the output so it says these two queries right which is uh, which which has these two sql ids and called from this particular module and out of these two, 45.23% of the total DB file scattered read happened because of the select all from dictionary.bigtab table, right? And only 5% of the total 100 was due to this 9A7B uh, SQL ID. This, this uh, was a different SQL ID, which is basically doing and scanning up everything from this table coined as the giant table owned by the shit schema and rest 49.77 percent is owned by by other set of sequels not any individual sequels but yeah these two are the leading sequels because they if you count they basically contribute more than 50 percent of the total wait time of db file scattered read so uh now you've got the answer so what you'll do you start your troubleshooting you start your your tuning exercise, you need to check like what is the execution plan for this SQL and uh, why it's going for a full table scan. So you have to go and check the data distribution. If histogram can help you, if not, go and check the statistics. If statistics are up to date, if even they are they're OK, check for indexes. If indexes are there or not. Uh, and if indexes are there, but they're not fit, but again, that 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 is a different scenario. You have to troubleshoot in that particular direction. But let's assume like indexes are there and everything is OK. Then you have to check like if there is any plan fluctuation happen or a plan flip or a toggling happening. So you just need to check what all plan hash values are available at the moment for this SQL ID, which is a leading cause of the DB file scattered read in the database for that particular period of time when customer reported some two days back some slowness, right? And accordingly, you have to devise a strategy. You have to prepare a plan. To, to handle this issue. So that's how active session history views can be really beneficial, right? In order to troubleshoot, in order to understand, because the problem with the AWR report is like you, it it doesn't shows you the relationship of uh, the SQL ID and it wait time and session uh, information and the wait events basically. So for wait events and session specific information, you always have to rely on ASH. So that's the difference between AWR and ASH report. So that's why I always ask, for AWR report and ASH reports <coughs> separate. OK, any questions before I move to the next slide? So we can get the uh, almost same thing uh, as some is in ASH top also. ASH uh, top, yes. Um, the SQL right. ID and the per number of percentage which is uh, taking Absolutely. them. Uh, yes, that's right. That's because if you talk about the ASH top, top script or utility, it also banks or relies on active session history, db underscore hist underscore active session history, dynamic views as well. Okay. Right, so that is the reason because that that tool is if you check the code of ashtop, you'll you'll go and see like db underscore hist underscore active session history are frequently called. So that is the reason you get almost similar information uh, in the form of snaps 
and uh, other information and source information from Ashtop and Dashtop tools as well. But a lot, there are a lot of tools, not only Ash and Dashtop, because I'm I'm a kind of a big fan of uh, these two tools. Otherwise, there are a lot of other there, uh, other there um, shared by a uh, few really uh, hardworking people uh, from Oracle background. But yeah, these two are my personal favorite. Otherwise, there are a lot of other tools available which are completely written around uh, querying db underscore active session histories. Okay, 